most people understand intuitively that being unemployed means not having a job. That said, it's important to understand more precisely how unemployment is measured in order to properly interpret and make sense of the numbers that appear in the newspaper and on television. Officially, a person is unemployed if he or she is in the labor force but doesn't have a job. Therefore, in order to calculate unemployment, we need to understand how to measure the labor force. The labor force in an economy consists of those people who actively want to work. The labor force is not equal to the population, however, since there are usually people in a society who either don't want to work or who are unable to work. Examples of these groups include full-time students, stay-at-home parents, the disabled, and so on. Note that work in an economic sense strictly refers to work outside of the home or school, since in a general sense, students and stay-at-home parents actually do plenty of work. For specific statistical purposes, only individuals aged 16 and older are counted in the potential labor force, and they're only counted in the labor force if they're actively working or have looked for work in the last four weeks. So we can think about the breakdown of our population here. We can see that this total bar represents the overall population. Then we can say, well, not all of those people are over 16. So we can think about the subset of the population that's over 16, which would be from here down. We can then think about that subset that is, in fact, actively looking for work or working, and that's just going to be this subset here. So it's this actively wanting to work subset that's actually what's counting as our labor force. Obviously, people are counted as employed if they have full-time jobs. That said, people are also counted as employed if they have part-time jobs, are self-employed, or work for a family business, even if they don't explicitly get paid for doing so. In addition, people are counted as employed if they are on vacation, maternity leave, etc. People are counted as unemployed in an official sense if they are in the labor force and not employed. More precisely, unemployed workers are people who are able to work, have actively looked for work in the past four weeks, but have not found a job or taken a job, or been recalled to a previous job. The unemployment rate is reported as the percentage of the labor force that is counted as unemployed. Mathematically, the unemployment rate is calculated as follows. We take the number unemployed as we just defined it, and we divide that by the number in the labor force, which we defined over here as those actively wanting to work, and then we multiply that guy by 100% here. Notice that we can also refer to an employment rate that would just be equal to 100% minus the unemployment rate, or we can see here that the employment rate, we can either think of it as the number of employed people divided by the number of people in the labor force times 100%, or because everybody in the labor force is either employed or unemployed, as we can see here, this part here is our total labor force, and we're just partitioning that into unemployed and employed. So by that logic, the employment rate, because it's as a fraction of the labor force, has to be equal to 100% minus the unemployment rate. Because output per worker is ultimately what determines the standard of living in an economy, it's important to understand not only how many people who want to work are actually working, but also how much of the overall population wants to work. Therefore, economists define the labor force participation rate as follows. We've got the labor force participation rate is equal to the number in the labor force divided by the number in the adult population, again, times 100%. So we can think about the labor force participation rate over here being these guys here who are actively looking to work, so they're in the labor force, divided by the total population that's over 16 years old. So we can think of it as from here down, 
divided by from here down. One other useful statistic to think about is the employment population ratio, which is, not surprisingly, equal to the number of employed people divided by the adult population. Given the earlier definitions, the employment population ratio equals the product of the unemployment rate and the labor force participation rate. Or more specifically, we'll see that it's the unemployment rate divided by 100 times the labor force participation rate divided by 100 to counter the fact that we multiplied by 100% when we decided to represent the unemployment rate and the employment rate in terms of percentages. So we can see here that the employment population ratio, if we wanted to calculate that directly, is just the number of employed people over the number of people in the adult population. We can see that over here as the number of employed people, which is this segment here, divided by the population that's over 16. So we would get from here down divided by from here down. Because the unemployment rate is measured as a percentage of the labor force, an individual is not technically counted as unemployed if she has gotten frustrated with looking for a job and has given up on trying to find work. These discouraged workers would, however, probably take a job if it came along, which implies that the official unemployment rate understates the true rate of unemployment. This phenomenon also leads to counterintuitive situations where the number of employed people and the number of unemployed people can move in the same rather than opposite directions because of changes over time in those who are counting themselves as members of the labor force. In addition, the official unemployment rate can understate the true unemployment rate because it doesn't account for people who are underemployed, i.e. working part-time when they would like to be working full-time, or who are working at jobs that are below their skill levels or pay grades. Furthermore, the unemployment rate doesn't report how long individuals have been unemployed, even though duration of unemployment is clearly an important measure. Official unemployment statistics in the United States are collected by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Clearly, it's unreasonable to ask every person in the country whether he or she is employed or looking for work each month. So the Bureau of Labor Statistics relies on a representative sample of 60,000 households from the current population survey. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reports the unemployment rate as we defined, as well as five other measures of unemployment, which we'll talk about later.